My name is Danny Jollymore. I'm in the Applied Media and Communication Arts program here at NSCC. A lot of people don't understand exactly, not even just being the transgender, it's, uh, they don't understand how you don't fit into a binary. They're like, well, you have to be this, and there's an off, oftentimes you hear not trans enough, um, which is very frustrating, but people just don't really understand unless they go through it, and there's no way to explain it because it's just a feeling you have. You can't explain a feeling. But yeah, I think people assume like, you know, being gay or whatnot, it's a choice that you make, and it's certainly not, at least not in my case, um, and I don't think it is in anyone else's. And I think that the whole question on when did you choose to be straight, it makes people wonder, well, yeah, actually, you know what, I didn't. And I think that sort of t changes their mindset in realizing that it's not a choice for trans people or gay or lesbian people either. And I think people are slowly getting there, but I think it should be brought up a lot more. At first, again, people don't understand it, so they instantly get the you know, face of disgust, I guess, because it's uh, not something they understand. And I know I have been called many things, which I'm not going to say, but they're not good. For me personally, I've been told that I need to, you know, be more manly, that I'm not, these words haven't been said, but I'm not trans enough. You know, I'm not a tall person. I'm very small. That's hard enough when you're, you know, even if I was born a cis guy, it'd be hard being, being a small person. But people tell me all the time, like, you're like, yeah, well, you're not a, really a man because one, you don't have certain parts and two you're not a big fella so you're really not anything and it's like yeah I've had really uncomfortable personal questions uh, from random people on the street at the bar because I, I perform at uh, at the bar doing drag and stuff so I've had people come up to me and they're like well what do you have your in your pants and it's like that isn't the question you ask anybody let alone a trans person because that's a lot more dysphoric I think than a cis man or cis woman so it's, it's a hard thing to answer and even to think about sometimes. I personally just identify as a person, not a gender. Um, even growing up, I was just me. But the good thing about that for me is I can just be whatever I want and whoever I want, and I don't have to fit into a category. The whole thing about Facebook taking off drag queens and kings' uh, profiles is a little bit much, I think, because, you know, who are they to say what is and is not real? I mean, for some people, being a drag queen or king is more of what they identify as than, you know, what people appear to be. Um, so th in that aspect, I think that's a bit ridiculous and they should be a bit more open-minded. I was born out of province, so changing my birth certificate's a lot more difficult, I think, mm -hmm. because I don't have to, I don't fit into the Nova Scotia standards. I have to fit into the Saskatchewan standards of what they consider a uh, qualification for gender reassignment surgery. And it's not the same as here. So for that aspect, it's a lot harder for me, I find, than it would be here now that it's accepting here with the sexual reassignment surgeries. For me, it's really hard to have to explain my situation. I mean, I've changed my name legally, but my gender marker still has an F on it. And it's really hard to try to explain that even coming into school. It's, well, what's your gender? And it's like, well, it's not really this, but it's not that, because legally it's one thing, but I identify as another is really difficult. So I'd like them to, you know, sort of follow Ontario's footsteps and give a third option or a, or no option and you know just be more open to you know not fitting into one or the other. I definitely think finding a good support system first because there is a lot of I wouldn't say negativity but there is a lot of downfalls and obstacles that have to overcome and if you don't have a good support system it can be really disheartening um, but I would definitely you know do your research find you know, some health providers that can point you in the right direction or, you know, I've actually helped a few people and pointed them in the right direction myself. Um, so if you, f if you know someone that has gone through it, look to them. They will try to help you. But yeah, definitely just look for doctors that are friendly because mine wasn't at first and that was hard. My family doctor, he, I was the first trans person he had ever met in like 30 years of his practice. So him and I are on a learning curve together. I actually brought my mom to come with me when I got top surgery. It was actually on Mother's Day weekend, so she ended up getting a boy for Mother's Day. <laughs> Something I think I would like people to know would simply be that no one fits into a binary. We're all different, and I think people need to understand that it's really not an easy thing and it's not a choice, and we are honestly just trying to get through and doing the best that we can in this life as people and as trans people.